Okay. Uh, we do want to make uh, let you all know that Nowcast is here uh, up there. To uh, we are filming this, and it will be aired. So they can just go to NowcastSA.com. NowcastSA.com. So wave to the cameras. <laughs> okay. Um, one, just one quick thing on the in your packets, you, you'll find some green sheets. It's an evaluation form. Please take some time to fill that out. Let us know what topics that you would like to see for next year and uh, future years. So that's real important that we know. We, uh, this, this topic today has become a very uh, popular one. So we would like to hear from you as far as what, what else you would like to see us cover. Um, we would like to announce on page seven of your uh, program is a one-page announcement of our Neighborhood Awards program. Uh, we are holding it again this year, so please take some time to read through that and um, submit your award entries. Um, okay, we'll go ahead and start with the program. Uh, just, just a quick announcement, too, after the, the panelists we're going to have time for our round tables from 1 to 1.30 or thereabouts. And they are located over on this end of the gym. They are, there's some signs that have uh, each of the safe officer substation locations. And then we have some city and county program tables in the back. And our panelists will refer to that. Uh, we have um, the pleasure of having one of our longtime NRC Friends, uh, County Commissioner Tommy Atkinson, who would like to say a few marks, remarks. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, Sylvia. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Congratulations to each and every one of you for having the enlightened self-interest or the uh, motivation, the inspiration to be here. I, I want to, of course, congratulate the leadership team of the Neighborhood Resource Center. It is, uh, I, I founded my own neighborhood association about, about almost 35 years ago. And uh, I know that you probably will find this really remarkable and hard to believe that I'm still an officer in that association. Anybody been an officer for more than one year? <laughs> it just seems to go with the turf. But uh, when people say, well, why are you still an officer? Because I'm not going to let go of it until somebody rips it out of my hands. I don't want anybody to take my office and end up doing nothing or bobbling the ball or saying, oh, what the heck, it's optional. You don't really need a neighborhood association after all. You know, that's bull. Well, let me just say, that is heifer dust. That is heifer dust. We need neighborhood associations so that we can take care of the territory, right? You know, good neighborhoods don't just happen. They are, uh, they are the end product of a process of people pulling themselves together, educating themselves, being good and decent people, uh, caring deeply, and not treating it like a, uh, a disposable thing in our life where you just, like a, a handkerchief or a, a Kleenex, where you just throw it away after you use it. No, no, this neighborhood has real people in it. This neighborhood has people who are hoping to achieve uh, their dreams of having uh, a great place to live and raise their children in. But I, when I mentioned the, the, the Neighborhood Resource Center team, they are Susan Shop, Sylvia Mendiola, thank you, Sylvia, uh, Wendell Davis, who's out of town here this morning, Tom Newton, who is a lawyer and a, a great resource for this uh, NRC, Don Arispe, Natalie Biggers, Michael Montoya, Jackie Pepper, Susan Sheeran, and on the staff, Rosalind Chavez. Uh, let's have a round of applause for all those great people. Thank you. See, I believe the Neighborhood Resource Center is a great overarching organization that we all need to make sure that neighborhoods are respected across the city. When we send a person to the city council or commissioner's court, it is very important that you be able to reach not only that individual that you directly elect, 
but the colleagues that they're sitting with so that they will resonate with these issues. And I look at uh, animal control and code compliance as good examples of where I think there's probably a couple of council districts that it's not so very critical to. But I can tell you in the older areas of the city, it's very critical. As one person said, some people move up to the neighborhood and some people move into the neighborhood. And I would like to think that people move up to my neighborhood, not just into it, so that they'll come in and do some great things. But when it comes to leading neighborhoods, I think of the uh, Theodore Roosevelt quote. He said, the, uh, in his quote called The Arena, it's not the critic who counts, not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles or where the doer of deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs, and this is where I think of you, the leadership, the membership, as well as the leadership, the elect. Many of you have been in office, and you're out of office, but you may even actually be the de facto leader, or you don't need a title, because everybody knows that you're, the, you're one of the leaders, if not the leader. And so that, that's an important deal. Not everybody who holds an office uh, really makes uh, the same impact that some who don't hold an office, but who do a lot of work, uh, do. But he says, or where the doer of deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs to the man who's actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust, by dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly, who errs, who comes up short again and again because there is no effort without error and shortcoming, but who does actually strive to do the deeds, who knows the great enthusiasms, the great devotions, who spends him or herself in a worthy cause, who at the best knows in the end the triumph of high achievement. Putting a neighborhood association together, keeping it together is an act of high achievement. You know that. It's a big deal. It's a big deal. And that's why this NRC conference every year is a big deal to me. Because I, I can tell you what, and I'm looking at a young guy. Stand up. This guy is on his neighborhood association board, and he is 19? 18. <laughs> you know, we all look around at our neighborhood membership and we all think, I uh, wonder who's going to follow us. Or, you know, and then you get some to say, oh, no, I'm going to be here forever. You know, I don't want anybody else taking my place. And, 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 and you know, you see them kind of struggling and you think, come on, come on. Let the fresh blood come into the process. Acknowledge, appreciate them. Ask them to go out and get more young people. I think that is the essence of some of the leadership that we have got to have in our neighborhoods because what's not ex uh, uh, sus sustainable is merely extendable. If you, don't, if, you, if you don't get new folks in, and I know of several neighborhood associations, I've got 60 unincorporated areas in my precinct, but I will tell you, we have a lot of neighborhood associations, our number, that have gone out of existence. They're out of existence because they did not fulfill the John Maxwell 21st irrefutable law of leadership, the law of succession, the law of succession. So anyway, uh, Theodore Roosevelt left us with these uh, words who at best knows in the end the triumph of high achievement, who at the worst, if he fails, at least fails while daring greatly, so that his place shall never be among those cold and timid sh souls who know neither victory nor defeat. So with that, I say keep up your great work, support the Neighborhood Resource Center against the backdrop of your support for your own neighborhood association, and let's have not a good but a great community. So ladies and gentlemen, congratulations to you for being here. Thank you so much. Thank you, Commissioner Atkinson. We are always happy to have you here at our, our conference. We're, before we start the panel, we're going to have our uh, drawing of the uh, one hour uh, with our attorney, Tom Newton. And uh, we'll go ahead and make that, uh, get the uh, winner chosen. Somebody would like to pick a winning ticket. Ms. Jeannie Russell would have the pleasure.
Ann Teeley. All right, congratulations. Okay, we'll go ahead and start our afternoon panel on neighborhood safety. Our moderator today is Jeannie Russell. She is with SA 2020, and I'd like to just kind of briefly describe her background. She's, uh, Jeannie received her bachelor's in anthropology from UC Berkeley and her master's in education from UC Davis. She also received her joint master's in journalism and Latin American studies from New York University. She has spent several years as a teacher in New York City, Tokyo and Guatemala City, City. So she's very well educated and traveled. Um, she has also been involved uh, as a staff and advisor to two of our mayors, Mayor Hardberger and Mayor Castro. Uh, at this time, I'd like to go ahead and turn the program over to Jeannie Russell with SA 2020. Thank you. Hi there. Welcome and thank you for having me. Um, I just wanted to start out by asking how many of you actually participated in the SA 2020 meetings? So that's great. Um, thank you for being there. Thank you for being a part of our community vision. For, for those of you who were not um, part of the community meetings, I just wanted to set the stage by giving you a little context of SA 2020 and where things stand now. So SA 2020 was a citywide community visioning process where we set really ambitious goals for our city in 11 areas, um, one of which is super relevant for today, which is community safety. Um, there are a number of others that also touch on what you're talking about today, like neighborhoods, for example. So just this week, um, we had the first progress report on how we were doing on those goals, and I'm really enthused to tell you that in the area of community safety, we've actually made some very impressive progress um, largely because of the great support we've gotten from the law enforcement agencies represented here. So thanks to both of you um, for that. Uh, the big goals that the community set in the area of community safety were around, of course, the overall crime rates. That's not surprising. Um, also, uh, really important to people was police response times. And um, I'm sure we'll hear a little bit more about that, but the police re uh, response times have improved dramatically since that goal was set, and so thanks to Chief McManus and all of SAPD for that. Um, another really significant goal that the community set and was reinforced this week when we came together again was around um, community involvement in public safety, and I think that really gets at the heart of what you're talking about today here at this conference. So increasing the number of folks who are really um, taking uh, control of their own safety in their own communities through programs like Citizens on Patrol. Am I getting that name right? See, the, the program that trains folks to um, really work in tandem with law enforcement in their own neighborhoods, programs like that. And we've also seen some really significant increases in the number of folks engaging those types of programs. So across the board on community safety, we've seen some really important strides. So I'm really happy to be here today um, and to be joined by two men who have a wealth of experience in law enforcement, a tremendous history. Um, unlike me, who's popped around and lived in lots of different places and done a lot of different things, these guys have been doing the work for a really long time and bring tremendous expertise to this panel. So um, we're going to start out, I think, with uh, Deputy Chief Joe Hamilton, who's to my right and who is with the Bear County Sheriff's Department. And then we're going to move over to Assistant Chief Jose Banales. Did I get that right? And um, hear a little bit about what's happening in each of those law enforcement agencies as it relates to neighborhood safety. So thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much on behalf of uh, the sheriff who is in class this morning. She loves to come to functions and to speak. So I, I am a fill-in. We love to come to your neighborhood association meetings, so please call us and invite us. Uh, where's Leonard? Leonard's at the back, and he handles all in RB. They handle all tough questions. <laughs> and, and they'll be part of, the, uh, part of the group discussion afterwards. 
It's uh, great to be here. Also, I keep running into the commissioner everywhere. Uh, it's so, so cool that he's involved in so much, and he's everywhere, and, and the reason is that he cares. And I just think we're blessed to have that, uh, that uh, commissioner in, in here. A um, couple of things to talk about at BCSO, the Sheriff's Office. Our primary responsibility is in the unincorporated area of the county. If you're in a, a city, then normally you would go through them, and, and uh, most may live in the city of San Antonio, and they have excellent programs, and I'm sure Joe will address some of those things. Uh, the biggest thing is to be involved, and you are involved, so I commend you for being here. We want you to be a difference maker and not a victim. Uh, the county is divided into 16, 16 districts, and we have officers, now that's the unincorporated area, and we have deputies assigned to each of those districts. Typically, typically have 30 to 40 on duty at a time, 24 seven. Mainly they answer calls for service, uh, patrolling residential areas, traffic law enforcement, and business patrol. Those, those four key areas, primarily what they do. What can you do to help? We can't see, if we witness something, we can take action. But we can't see or hear everything that's going on. And one real important thing, when you see something in your neighborhood, somebody doing something that's a little suspicious, write something down. It's, it's, a, it's a link that tells us where to start looking. So write it down, write down the date, time, and location that you see something and that gives us a starting place to start an investigation. And when you see something that just seems a little different or a little odd, trust your instincts. And it may be a, a, an unfamiliar vehicle in your neighborhood. It may be parked at a neighbor's house. And if you just will, if you just blow it off and don't do anything, you could be the next victim. Uh, in one instance, we had a person knocking on a door and came to the door and said they were there to do some work and the uh, resident said, no, you must have the wrong house. This was a burglar. He was checking to make sure that uh, nobody was home. And, and the person didn't capture any information from that person. So if they come to your door, ask for a business card, get some identification, they are very likely to be legitimate. But they're also very likely to be casing out your residence and to see if anybody is home. So write down that information don't take action on your own if you're in the city call call the city if you're in the unincorporated area then then uh, call the county there are some key numbers everybody knows the 911 and uh, the, the, the chief will share with you the city's number but our non-emergency number is 335 6000 and you should have that number written next to your phone somewhere 335 is 210 335 6000 and you'll get a menu depending on what your need is and you can punch in one, two, three or four or whatever and an officer will be dispatched or deputy will be dispatched to your location to check that out. But have those numbers handy and, and be very wary and cautious. Now this is not just when you're at your home but if you're at Walmart or if you're at HEB, be cautious and stay in groups and watch what's going on around you Look for anything suspicious so that you don't become a victim. I uh, want you to be a difference maker and not a victim. Uh, check out our website for the, the county, and there's all kinds of programs from Neighborhood Watch to uh, COPS program and uh, many opportunities, but the main thing is to be involved and that you care about your community, and that's because you're here. I think I've covered everything that I have on my list. Uh, I will give you one example. If you have stuff in your home that's of value, we had five go guns stolen from a residence one time and, and we tried to get an inventory. The uh, owner didn't have any numbers written down. So it was hard to track something that's stolen if you don't have any numbers written down. So get your little spiral notebook or use your computer and write down the, what you have of uh, value in, in the serial numbers so that if it is stolen, then we kind of know what we're looking for. That'd be a good thing to do. Thank you very much for the invitation and thank you on behalf of our, of our sheriff. And if we 
Uh, she's, she's busy talking all the time and talking to groups, and she's gifted at that, but I'm a fill-in, and it's an honor to be here. Thank you much. Good afternoon. Uh, Jose Vinales, I'm the Assistant Chief for the Police Department overseeing the Operations Support Bureau. Uh, that's encompassing three of the divisions, which is the Investigations Division, Terrorism and Criminal Intelligence Division, and the Tactical Support Division. On behalf of Chief McManus, I want to thank you for the opportunity of being out here. And, I, and like Joe Hamilton said, uh, I commend you for being involved. Uh, as Commissioner Atkinson also said, that that's uh, the source of those those that will follow you in your roles as you are taking those leadership roles in your neighborhood. And that's a very important statement he made because for us, we know with the large area that we have to provide services is something that we cannot do on our own. Uh, we rely heavily on the eyes and ears from you to report those, those activities that you see that you might consider suspicion. Even if it's, if it's not suspicious at the time, just like Joe Hamilton said, writing down the license plate number, date and time, we can always correlate that information with other leads that we might have uh, that others are reporting to pinpoint that individual or vehicle involved in a criminal activity. Uh, again, uh, there's various programs in which you all can participate in assistance San Antonio Police Department and Bear County Sheriff's Office in allowing us to provide you better services. And, and as I see, the cellular on patrol, the neighborhood watch programs, uh, there's uh, other programs that are sponsored through our SAFE program that you all can get involved. Our VIPs have been instrumental in providing uh, surveillance over the holidays, those high crime areas in the neighborhoods. Uh, one, a couple of them that I know of for sure is like Ingram Park Mall, uh, the downtown area. Uh, Central Park Mall, North Star Mall, those areas, they've always provided surveillance for the police officers to be on hand in case they see or witness some criminal activity. Uh, the police department is, is really broken up into six service areas. Uh, and within those six service areas, each one of them is commanded by police captain, and he has anywhere between two to 300 police officers assigned to that service area that uh, patrols and gives you your, your patrol availability for that area 24-7. Uh, at any one point in time, we will have approximately 150 police officers patrolling the, the entire city, in addition to the other special units that we have, such as a POP, our DWI enforcement, our traffic enforcement detail, our SWAT detail, and uh, a couple other specialized units, uh, narcotics, vice, and rope. So we, we, we do, we do have, feel that we're comfortable in the numbers that are out there providing service. However, uh, we also want to push out, like Joe said, see something, say something. Uh, if you see something that really caught your eye for some reason, report it. Uh, say something to somebody that we, we uh, recently stood up a Southwest Texas Fusion Center, and that's the repository for all the intelligence coming in to the police department, whether it be through the police department, Bear County Sheriff's Office, FBI, DEA, we're all interconnected at that Fusion Center. So, in fact, Joe, Joe didn't mention it, but he has a Bear County Sheriff's Officer assigned to the Southwest Texas Fusion Center. So we're right next door, like we are right here in, in the Fusion Center, so we can talk and exchange information, exchange intelligence. So it doesn't matter who you report that to, whether it's Bear County or SAPD, uh, we, we will get that information out to the, the field units. Again, on behalf of Chief Manus, thank you for allowing us to participate in the Neighborhood Resource Community uh, meeting. Uh, it's our privilege to be here. Thank you. Um, I'd like to just make a, a, just a quick announcement. Somebody lost their car keys. Um, the the keychain is a James Avery keychain with it says very special dad on it. It's with the alarm clicker. So if anybody finds or sees a, um, a set of uh, car keys, uh, please let us know. 
Thank you. Go ahead, we'll go ahead with a Q&A session. Thank you. So we're going to open this up for questions and answers from the audience. Anybody want to start off? We like to try and use the mic so everyone can, can hear you. The other day I was watching the city council meeting and I seen where the chief said that the crime is way down. The same token, the next day I get an email that says that crime is way up. Every day when I go and check the crime statistics in my neighborhood, every day I see at least one assault and one a burglary. And we see a lot of these gold. We buy gold, we buy silver, whatever. Are these places regulated like a pawn shop should be? And are they required to record whoever pawned something or sells something to them? Because my neighbors are telling me when they get burglarized, they're not taking TVs. They're not taking those types of items. They're taking gold and silver and things like this that they can get rid of quickly and stick it in their pocket and walk away. So, so two questions, right? First about whether the crime rates are up and are down, and yes. second question about um, what sort of regulation there is of the pawn shops. I don't know if that's something SAPD As far as the daily crime report that we get and that we utilize to deploy our resources and strategically and tactically uh, try to address crime areas, uh, our property crime numbers overall citywide is down 15 percent. Uh, and that's not to be confused with the UCR data the FBI puts out. Uh, this data that I just told you that we're down 15 percent is the numbers that we use on a daily basis to to gauge the crime rate in specific service areas. Citywide, we're down 15%, and, and, and if I were to know the specific service area where your, your residence is, I'd be able to tell you what the crime rate is for that area. If it's central service area, uh, we show a 21% decrease in property crime in that area. Uh, again, you may be hearing that a burglary or uh, of an offense going on in your area, but compared to the numbers that we compared to last year, we're still showing a decrease in the crime. What neighborhoods are? That's a West Service area. And we're showing a 12% decrease in, in property crimes. Uh, with, with the only exception in, in, in the service area that has a increase in crime is arson. And we're showing an 8% increase in crime in arson for the West Service area. Uh, your second question regarding pawn shops, they are somewhat regulated, uh, however, uh, the reporting responsibilities for the pawn shops to report the items that they take in are is on a voluntary basis. Uh, we have a program here in San Antonio called Leads Online, and pawn shops are can report all the, the items they take in on a voluntary basis on Leads Online electronically so that we can cross-reference whether those items have been reported stolen. But uh, that, like I said, that will take legislature changes at the state level for us to regulate them even more. Okay, I believe we have a question back here. Uh, yes, sir, you mentioned for us to make sure that when we see it, we call it in. Um, I'm wondering, first of all, what kind of training the dispatchers have, and also what can we do if they refuse to take a report, because that's happened to us numerous times. We call a non-emergency number. Sometimes they'll refuse to take it. Sometimes they'll say, oh, that's a code compliance issue, even though it's something that our safe officers already told us. It's not a code compliance issue. It's something we need to call about. And one time, uh, for instance, something there that's happened numerous times is that a trailer will pull up on the highway right away. They start unloading furniture. They have no license plate. They start selling it right there. 
our safe officer had told us that they were having problems with the Roosevelt flea market, with the, that they had captured several people who were selling stolen goods, and, they, and that this might be tied to this, that they were instead just coming to our neighborhood and trying to sell them on the street there. And sometimes, you know, I would tell the dispatcher, no, this is a police matter. We need someone to come out and check in, and our safe officer specifically asked us to call you. And sometimes they would take the report for that reason, Sometimes they would refuse to take the report. One time I called up, sometimes I would call up back and ask to speak to the supervisor. And one time I called and it happened the same person answered the phone and she hung up on me because I asked to speak to her supervisor. So it's very frustrating when you're trying to encourage people in your neighborhood as a sell your own patrol coordinator to call and report things and then they say, well, we tried to call and they wouldn't take the report. Okay, so that sounds like what can we do for SAPD. Can I just add to that? I, I think. Um, I, I maybe have had the opposite issue of um, not being sure when you should call. So is there a good place for maybe citizens to inform themselves about what we should be calling about and what really is a nuisance call? It's unfortunate that to hear that one of our call takers hung up on you and I will uh, address that uh, with our staff. Uh, however, through the uh, strategic management for accelerate response times, which is our SMART initiative, in order for us to improve our response times to actual uh, crime activity, uh, we have taken efforts to uh, what we call expedite reports for those uh, incidents that do not require a police officer to make the scene. Uh, so that, and, and again, uh, those, those are the things that we try to do to be able to be available to respond to the emergencies and those uh, incidents in which do require a police officer to make the scenes. Uh, we have tried to improve the coordination with 311, uh, our co-compliance uh, number that they, they get all the inf their calls through is the 311 line. However, from what I understand, that 311 is not available 24-7. So at a certain point in time, those calls do roll into our dispatch center. And we have instructed our call takers to try to take that report over the phone so that we're not tying up resources, police officers, in handling non-law enforcement activities. But if you really need a police officer, we will send a police officer to the location where you're requesting it. Uh, I will try to... Uh, Recently, the 311 call center was placed under a new uh, director, uh, who is Daiga Van for the city now. Uh, so we will try to touch base with her to improve the service delivery that you're talking about when you call 311 or the non-emergency number for SAPD so that uh, those kind of things don't happen. I'll also comment on that. If it's in the unincorporated area, and you call our dispatch, and if you have a problem or not getting some kind of service, uh, call me, and I'll give you my phone number. It's 210-335-5111. Uh, now, I'm not gonna be there at midnight. You can leave a message because it's an administrative number, or you can shoot me an email at joe.hamilton at bear.org and we'll check it out. It may be a perfectly reasonable, reasonable explanation. It may not be, but if, if you're victimized, you don't care what the stats are, whether they're up or down, you're a victim and you need assistance. So you can also send a, a message or an email to the sheriff on, on the website and she'll hand it to me if it's a patrol matter because I'm over the patrol division and also special operations but call us and let us know. Uh, we'll, try to, we'll try to fix it or address it with you individually and then uh, hopefully provide better service. The code compliance is a little different in the county than it is in the city. The cities generally have much more authority to regulate those issues than, than the county, but we'll try to do our best to, uh, to help you out. Chief, Chief, could you repeat that number, please? BR549. So, no, the uh, phone number, is, that's a joke for those that have remember that old laugh-in show. Uh, it's 210-335-5111. Uh, 
5102 and leave a message, which is fine if, if I'm not in, because I'm not in today, I'm, I'm here. Or the email, I do tons of, of uh, uh, email, so it's uh, joe.hamilton at bear.org. We do have a question, another question over here. Yes, my name is Henrietta LaGrange, and I live in the Woodlawn Lake uh, neighborhood. My, uh, I really don't know what it's a, it's hard to explain this, but my neighbor had their bicycle stolen, and we provided the information to the safe officer, and uh, which was the driver's li the license plate. He comes back and tells me, because we have an alley where, you know, trucks can go or vehicles in and out. And he said, that's your neighbor. So what does he think, that my neighbor does not commit crimes? And he wouldn't give us any more information. Just says, that's your neighbor. But the, the license plate was given to him by the neighbor or the person that had the bicycle stolen. And all he says is, that is your neighbor. But it means that my neighbor is not capable of committing a crime. The thing is, the safe officer didn't come back and give us any information where he lived or anything. You know, there's no accountability there. She had her refrigerator stolen from her carport, and one of my neighbors was taking a bath, and she had her air conditioning stolen from the window. Yeah. Thank you. So, again, SAP, and maybe um, what would be helpful here is to just talk about if you have issues like this, what are some of the places you should Whenever you have uh, a concern such as yours and you're not getting the response that you, you think you should be getting from the police officers out in the field, uh, you can always call the respective service area substation in which they report to and speak to a supervisor. And again, if you don't get results or response there, they do, they do have a captain. Uh, each service area has a captain overseeing that, that uh, substation and you can talk to the captain. If no, if you're not satisfied at that level, I'll do the same thing Chief Hamilton did is, you can send me an email directly and, and I will make sure that we follow up. Uh, I don't like hearing about things that we did not follow up or we failed to follow up. I think you all deserve uh, at least some feedback on your concerns and that's one thing we do stress that, that we at least follow up with the citizen and address your issues or your concerns. So my number is 210-207-8205. 210-207-8205. And email address is jose, J-O-S-E dot Banales, B-A-N-A-L-E-S at sanantonio.gov. Again, no. If you have issues with officers on the field and they're not uh, being responsive, uh, the first person you should try to talk to is the immediate supervisor out in the field. And he, every police officer reports to a sergeant out in the field and you can be, they, they can be contacted at the substation number. Okay. Right, we have a couple of more questions. I know Ms. Eckert had her hand up and then one more. I don't have a question. I just have a, a statement. Uh, we, we are very appreciative of our safe officer in Almas Park Terrace. Uh, I know Commissioner Atkinson was asking for young people to come into the neighborhood and step up to the plate. But um, about a week ago, I decided that maybe I needed to set the example. So I went out to patrol my neighborhood so the young people could see that even, even as you get older, you can still patrol and look and see. As I made the first street in my neighborhood, I noticed a police car. So I drove to the end, rolled my window down, and they rolled their window down. And one of the officers leaned over in the car, and I'm pretty sure it was my safe officer. But when I saw two police officers in the car, I knew that something wasn't right. 
So I just said, I'm patrolling the neighborhood, and I left. As I turned the corner and got on the next street, the police car was there, and they were in front of my house, my home. Both doors were open to the police car, and they had apprehended somebody. They were in pursuit at that time. I can't tell you how much we appreciate it. We're in a historic district, an older part of San Antonio. Uh, crime has not, it has not been a high crime rate, but we appreciate our officer. We appreciate Alfred Gomez. We appreciate Martinez. We appreciate all of the central safe officers, and I know all of their names, and they've all been, uh, as far as I'm concerned, perform above and beyond. Please do not do away with our safe department. They attend neighborhood association meetings at night when I know they'd rather be at home. They listen to all the gripes about dogs barking and everything else. So whatever you do, Sandra, wherever you are, don't do away with our safe department because we truly appreciate our officers. Thank you, San Antonio Police Department. One more question. Thank you very much for the kind words, ma'am. Thank you. Appreciate the support. Mine isn't a question. Mine is a thank you very much. I was just, uh, we were getting complaints and I wanted to tell you, we're very happy. Our per we, we have somebody policing, he goes, he waves at us and he's very nice. But when we call him, he's also very tough. So he's uh, controlling the neighborhood. Safe officers are a really important part. And I want to thank you for what you do for us and our city. Thank you. Thank you. So I think we're going to wrap up here. Thank you so much for your willingness to come out and take the tough questions and also share some um, tips. I don't know if either of you want to end on any kind of final tips for the, how we sort of strengthen this community partnership, because it sounds like that's really what it's all about. I want to acknowledge our uh, uh, COP program, Cellular on Patrol, and our volunteers. And when we have a, a disaster or something major, we have X number of people. When we have, just routinely, it's X number of people, they, they're not extended. Well, when you have volunteers, the volunteers actually make a difference. And so I commend our, our in various programs, and here the COPS program for those volunteers that are doing this on their own time, and they're just uh, really an asset to our community. We thank you both in the city and the outside, out, uh, outside the city for the volunteers that are participating in various programs. And I have to echo the same sentiments for our volunteers and our COP people and our, also our, our police explorers that they provide uh, so much for the police department in terms of their dedication and commitment uh, of all their time in assisting us in different, in many venues that they participate in. Uh, lastly, uh, again, as we move forward to trying to reach the goals for SA 2020, I think it's very important that we continue the partnerships that we can create uh, with the community and the police department and the sheriff's department working together. Uh, any, any, any way that we can increase or create a force multiplier for us is, is a tremendous help. And by utilizing you all as our eyes and ears, with you all knowing about the programs that we have in place to see something, say something, and all the various programs that are, are actually administered by our safe officers, uh, there's so many other programs that you could be involved in that would assist us in our efforts to reach our SA 2020 goals. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, at this time, we're going to break into the, oh, first we're gonna do some door prizes, sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you guys very much. Thank you, Jeannie. Thank you, Thank you Chief. Thank you, Chief. Can we give them another round of applause?